Okay, so good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Carolina Arias Munoz. I'm a PhD student from Politecnico di Milano in Italy. And I'm here to present, uh, sorry about the long title, but it's a web application basically to know, um, to find the best place to live uh, within a city. And the um, team that came up with this idea, sorry, it's not working. <laughs> It's blocked. Sorry. Okay. So the team that, that came up with this idea uh, is the one that you see here. Uh, we are uh, three environmental and geomatics engineers and two developers. And we belong to the Geomatics and Air Observation Lab uh, at Politecnico di Milano. And we basically um, are interested in WebGIS, volunteer geographic information systems, and uh, geo big data. So what is City Focus? So as, as I said before, it's a web-based uh, interactive 2D and 3D application, uh, not only to find the best place in a city to live, but also to pass a short stay in. So normally, when you want to move to another city that you don't know, you go to Google Maps or hopefully OpenStreetMap, and you check uh, the streets and you check more or less the services that you have available uh, because you don't know the place. And then you go to another website to check the prices of the houses, the apartments, and so on. So you have to do a lot of manual um, work, let's say. So we wanted to create uh, an application in, in order to make all this in just one place. And, um, and also the user can decide their different criteria and their importance. And at the end, to, to have a map that can show them uh, the different places within the city. So how is City Focus different from other apps? So actually the question that we had before was, is there an app that does these things? And actually we, d we couldn't find any app that uh, show you places within a city. I mean, we find, I put here just the, the main ones, but in this application you only, uh, they, they give you a city in the world. For example, uh, you put uh, your income, you put your preferences in temperature or services, and they can tell you uh, which city in the world you can go to live, but not within the city. Uh, so this is one uh, important question. And also, um, we try to make it as user-friendly as possible. We hope it, it is. Uh, avoiding long and handmade uh, search on the web. And also, uh, normally when you do this type of search, you, can, you normally don't consider the environmental conditions like air pollution, temperature, and so on. So uh, we also wanted to, to include this in, into the criteria. And, and most importantly, we only use open data and open specifications. Um, so this um, application was a winner for the MyGeos third call for innovative apps. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with MyGeos, but MyGeos was a project of the European Commission that finished uh, last uh, December. And this project, uh, the object, objective of this project is to create innovative apps in the environmental and social domains. So uh, they wanted to, to show the people that you can do stuff with Geo's uh, data core uh, open data and with open data in general. So basically the idea was to develop innovative application that they could be mobile or web-based uh, using only openly uh, or freely available data um, or also crowd-generated data in different domains, but especially addressing citizen needs. So uh, if you go to this link over here, you will find all the apps that were uh, win winners in these uh, calls. And you can also download this application and modify them because they are uh, published as, uh, free, uh, free, as free um, content. And you can also use it for commer commercial uses. So, as my uh, our application, you can download them, download it, in um, and modify the the application. Well, uh, in terms of data, we use uh, data specifically for the city of Milan in this case as a demo because we normally work with Milan and data from Milan. But actually, this can be used in, in whatever city you want because mainly the the, the data that we use was from OpenStreetMap. 
So it will depend on the availability of OpenStreetMap data in, in a specific uh, city. But we also use data from um, Lombardia region, the, um, the municipality of the city of Milan, uh, the, the National Statistical <coughs> um, Service, and of course the, the GEOS data core. So uh, the criteria that we consider just for this demo, because you can add uh, all the criteria that you want, but we use uh, especially environmental conditions so, such as air quality and the different temperatures within the city. We also use the population density because maybe some people want to live in the suburbs instead of the center of the city, for example. And, um, and the rest of the um, criteria are referred to the nearness. So nearness to transportation, for example, uh, bus stops and uh, train and metro station, or the nearness to services such as ATMs, pharmacies, coffee shops, hospitals, and so on. The nearness to nature, so if people want to be near to a park or a um, water stream. Um, we also consider the land use type, so if, if you want to live inside an industrial or a commercial uh, type of uh, land use and st stuff like that, or near, nearness to education, so schools, universities, and so on. Okay, so the application principle is actually really simple in a sense that it's a uh, map algebra, so you have different criteria um, that are the different, we call it score maps, that goes from 1 to 100, or for, to 0 to 100, or to 0 to 1. And basically you assign weights to the different score maps, then you sum and you obtain a, a final map. So it's, it's really simple. But before we, opt, um, in order to opt, or obtain these uh, score maps, we needed to make a data cleaning and data processing before um, just once, but we, we needed to do it, and then uh, these score maps went into the application. So we did, uh, first of all, data cleaning, and then um, the this, this score, uh, this score maps creation. We did it uh, using uh, Python script and GRASGIS. So first of all, we did the data cleaning because we had data from different sources that was the same data, for example. So we tried to clean the data uh, with buffers because we had data from OpenStreetMap that normally uh, was the majority of the data, but we also have uh, the, the same data from the municipality that probably is not ex exactly in the same position. So we tried to like choose one of them and we did it by, by buffers. And for the score maps creation, it depends on uh, the type of feature that we were, want to create. In this case, we have uh, point layers or polygon layers or raster layers. So in the case of point layers that uh, represents like services like hospitals, banks, post office, and so on, we um, thought of, um, let's say, a, a walking distance. So in, in average, we know that people don't want to walk more than 15 minutes to access a service. So uh, approximately, um, 50 minutes walking is 1,200 meters. So we use that uh, distance to create a spatial concentration maps using a quartic kernel density function. And then we normalize uh, in order to have the score maps between zero and one. For the case of the polygon layers, we have uh, more or less the same criteria in the sense that uh, in this case, you don't have a position, but you have the whole area. So we uh, rasterize the data then we create multiple distance buffers, taking into account, again, this 1,200 meter distance. We divide it in different uh, categories from 0 to 1,200. Uh, 1, and then we reclassified it and we created the score maps. For the last, the raster layer was uh, a little bit different because um, in this case, we already have raster data. We just needed to normalize it in order to have it from 0 to, for, from zero to 1. Uh, in the case of air pollution, we wanted the high scores um, be on the less polluted areas, of course. Uh, but for, for the case of temperature, population, uh, land use layers, we tried to create three different layer, uh, layers, yes, like categories, high, medium, low, or industrial, continuous, discontinuous. And then we create uh, the score maps by means of reclassification. 
So um, the, the architecture of the application is based mainly on two components. The first one is Rasterman, um, Raster Data Management and uh, NASA Whiteboard Win. I'm, I won't enter into much detail because I know uh, in the afternoon Professor Bauman is going to explain a lot better uh, Rasterman. But uh, basically it's, um, it's an array, uh, array DBMS um, that adds capabilities to storage and retrieval of array data or raster data. And um, NASA World War Queen, as you know probably, uh, is a 3D virtual globe. It's open source and customable. And you can add it to uh, the, any web application. So as I said before, City Focus relies on a standard installation of Razaman. Uh, this standard installation has normally SQLite database backend. Uh, for us, it was okay because we had we only have like 20 maps, so it was <coughs> fine. But actually, you can connect it to other type of databases like Postgre and so on. Uh, and basically, data are accessed over the web by petascope component of Razaman. Uh, so. Uh, this component is the one that translates the, the web coverage processing service um, queries from uh, the standard of GC. And uh, it, it uh, they say translated into the RAS SQL language. And, and this is what allows us to, um, to, port to create the, the map algebra. I'm going to show you how it's done. And for the client side, uh, combining jQuery uh, and WebBoard Win, it is possible to retrieve maps from Razaman to the WP WPCS and show them into the, to the end user. Uh, so apart from the raster data, we also wanted to show the vector data, so the locations of the different services. Uh, because we, are, we were working with Razam and we, we didn't want to, um, to access to this vector data through our, our database. So we just added uh, to the application using a GeoJSON. So it is only in the client uh, side of the application. And the final map, as well as the different score maps, uh, were, let's say, painted uh, by coloring a grid, so a, version, a vector version of the raster grid, uh, using ba the values of the retrieved CSV files from the WCPS request. Uh, we know that there is a way to color data using the WCPS, but we find it really not aesthetical. So we prefer this way, which was very much better. Um, so the WCPS requests are done in these ways, are very simple. You have to call the different layers and then you, uh, multi you make the, the, the map algebra and you request your data. In this case, we, do, we use a CSV, but you can request it um, using TIFF or JPEG. Uh, so this is the, um, the idea of the application. I'm going to show you anyway the, uh, a demo, a video of a demo. So first of all, you select your criteria and assign weights. Then you simply click on, um, on, on the bottom to find your place, and then you, the, the map will appear. You can use the, the map controls um, to, to see the map in 2D and also 3D. In the case of Milan, because Milan is so plain, you don't see a lot of 3D, but in other type of cities, you could see also uh, the topography. You can check each criterion maps, not, not only the, the resulting map, but you can also check the different criteria. You can navigate to the location of interest or the vector layers, and then you can do it again. So this is mainly how it works. So I'm gonna show you. If I can. Sorry about that. Yeah, but it's completely lost. Try it again. Okay. Ah, oh, there it is. <coughs> okay. Let's 
Okay, so this, these are the different criteria. The user just put the weights. And for each criteria, you have the, uh, the caption that explains you what, how you uh, assign the weights to each of the criteria uh, in this way. Then you click and you get your map. Uh, you can zoom in and check the vector layers with, of the different services that you choose. Then you can check also the individual uh, score maps. And then you can also see it in 3D, but of course, depending on the topography, and then you can do it again. So this is basically okay. Uh, so for future developments, we are thinking. Uh, to the possibility for users to get a glimpse of the changing environment by giving uh, like trends of, of the different criteria like the temperature or um, uh, other type of uh, environmental um, criteria. Um, we have uh, the, the final map but we, we don't put the, the name for example of the neighborhoods so we want to put also that. Uh, maybe take more advantage of the 3D functionalities, uh, so elevate, elevate uh, cells according to the cells values, for example. Um, we don't have user administration uh, functionalities yet, but the idea is to collect uh, people's choices. So in the future, we can have a lot of data uh, for research or maybe for urban management or marketing analytics. Um, we want to add information about house rent uh, prices, but this is, I mean, the, in, in the city of Milan, we, we're trying to make contact with some uh, real estate companies to add this information. And uh, as a first case study, we consider the city of Milan, but of course in the future we have, we want to add more uh, different cities. So you can check the application on this link, uh, and you can find also the source code and documentation in GitHub. And you can download it, use it, use it as you as you want. So thank you for your attention. So there is any question? Yeah. Any support for custom filtering on the layers? For example, everyone knows that there are schools, and there are schools. And if I only want to be close to the like the best part of it. Can uh, I, how feasible is it to add the customer? Uh, it is feasible. Uh, also, uh, sorry, the question was if there is like filtering um, capabilities to the to the application. Uh, we don't have it yet, but for sure it's really feasible. Yes. How do you dig the data that you do have the map from? Like, uh, supermarkets they open, they close. Yeah. Do you do a do you do a complete re-import of your data every time, or you just do the, the data? Uh, so the question is uh, if we uh, update the, 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 our data for the application. And actually, not yet. I mean, the, this was uh, a demo for the MyGeos um, call. But the idea, yeah, of course, is to update it. I mean, to have like a practically real-time uh, update of the data, especially if they are from OpenStreetMap. But we don't have it yet, and we are thinking on, on that. Yes? yes. Uh, you mentioned at the beginning you moved to a city, you looked at house prices. Yeah. Have you looked at whether your heat map of what's a good place to live according to you matches uh, house prices? Are, like, can you see good places to live that are more expensive? Uh, yeah, so the question is uh, if we checked the house prices within our application, and the answer is that, uh, I mean, we want this data to be inside of our application, but we don't have it yet because normally, especially in the city of Milan, all this data is private. It belongs to private companies. And so we don't have it yet, but we are trying to negotiate to put them on the application. Uh, we, we do it manually, 
like just to test and uh, yeah you can do it more or less but you, the idea is to include it in the application. And so like just by your impression it matches? Yeah. The pleasant places are better? Yeah, yeah. in some cases yes. Uh, so um, the question is that uh, if the um, uh, best the houses with the best prices match the best uh, the options of the people and normally yes uh, we we were afraid in the future also the fact that maybe people will I mean because the idea is to create a map that then we will show like the, the best places that people prefer and stuff like that we are um, afraid that this may be change the market in the in the city because you see maybe the map of peop of the areas that people prefer so um, we are not sure if we want that so we are we are trying to see how to to portray this data yeah uh, is, uh, how good is the tooling around that because i'm thinking if i can plug in berlin there how much time it will take me how much effort it will take me should i sanitize the data myself or i can just plug it into the open street map source and other sources and no i mean we did it very manually in the sense that we, uh, sorry, the, so the question is that uh, if we can uh, replicate this, this application to another city easily and um, not, I mean, depends because we actually take the OpenStreetMap data and we download the data. So we didn't use any API or anything and we did it very manually. So I guess if you uh, use the APIs, it will be easier. So, but we did we didn't do that. Okay, thank you.